This is my fan. Um, I chose a Max Air fan. Uh, the main reason is uh, I live in Vancouver and we do camp and we do get rain. It rains fairly often so uh, I wanted one that I could leave open in the rain because I, I like a fan on every night and uh, I like the fact this one also exhausts uh, and blows in and it's I believe it's even thermostat controlled. Um, it's kind of cool. It's a, got a neat look to it. If I can kind of different style than uh, a lot of the other ones but it's kind of kind of streamlined when it's down but yet uh, it's nice you can drive with it open um, it locks closed and uh, like I say the biggest selling feature was the fact it kind of looks cool uh, a little more streamlined than the other ones and that you can use it in the rain anyways so what I'm doing is trying to figure out the bars for this because I only have one inch bars so I have, to, I basically made like a little sled for it. So as you can see, it just clips over the edge and I can slide it back and forth. Um, so I gotta find my level, which I did. It's basically put a level across these two bars. It's gonna be different because it'll be high centered, but this level is still the same place. Um, so I'm basically gonna replace these with two bars here and then I have to be able to cut my, my curved bars that I bent and make it so it's all one piece. So I just put the fan over to the edge just because it's easier to work with. Uh, instead of having it in the middle where I gotta try and be there, it doesn't really make any difference to what I'm doing. So uh, I slid it around, found that this is my center point, and then I gotta find out um, that it's uh, five, uh, 15 and 5 16 center to center of the hole. So I need my, my pipes to be 15 and 5 16 to my two centers. And then I can take that measurement I'll find my center here and then I'll cut my pipe so it's the same radius and then I'll have to try and figure out how to knock it all up and put it together. But that's what I'm doing with this is trying to get the fan bars all figured out. So the bars will be inset, the skin will come in farther, the skin of the uh, thing will actually go past this uh, just the way it works out. I think you need to have it sealed about 14, I think it's 14 by 14. but the bars have to be where the um, screws go. It's just much stronger. So anyways, that's what I'm gonna have to do. Um, this is kind of where I'm at. So basically I'm gonna take this off, get my two bars in position, you know, roughly. And then, well, once I mark this out and cut these down, I kind of, kind of play with it. So that's what I'm working on. So what I am doing, is I'm making the fan support. I have a, a fan that's going on top. There'll be two crossbars and there'll be two bars going this way. These ones don't matter because they all go that way and they're all straight because this is straight across. It's, but this obviously has a radius. So I was playing with the, cause I don't have pieces bent for that. Um, so I was playing with the um, press uh, yesterday, trying to see if I could bend it in it cause I don't have a roller. Um, and it actually worked out not too bad. As you can see, um, I can get the radius pretty good. It doesn't seem to kink it that much. I'm, I am gonna try it with a piece of wood in between to see if I can get just the little divots out a little bit, but it actually looks like it'll work really well. So I need two short things basically from here to here, and then I'll fine tune them front or back uh, from there. So basically how I'm gonna do that, I've got my two marks. I'm gonna hold this up. Kind of press it against the back. Doesn't have to be straight, doesn't have to be nothing. And then mark right here on the inside of this. Oops. And just mark roughly where I gotta end. Take that out. So I cut all this off and leave this. And then I can throw this in the vise and then I can put it in the uh, the press and get the radius to, mat, to match because it'll sit on top of this and then I know it's the same curve um, because this is on the inside so the one inch pipe will be where the outside is, right? So that's what I'm gonna do, that's what I'm gonna try. Hopefully it works and if it works, I'll probably use the same method for the galley uh, door because I don't have the bars for that yet. So this is what I'm doing. 
hopefully this will work and I can get my fan and roof figured out because it's kind of coming along but it's to the point where I got some decisions to make as far as where my door is going to end, my seams for my skin, all these little things that need to be done because um, it has to have bars in the right places for everything. So um, unfortunately I can't get a skin <coughs> that is full length. The only way you can buy a skin that's long enough because it's, it's only a 10 foot trailer but that's not including the rise and coming around right so you can't buy that unless you buy metal that's on a roll and unless you're a manufacturer you're not going to get that they're not going to peel you off whatever 20 20 feet or whatever it is so you basically have to have a seam which is not too bad because at the back there i do have the the galley which will have a hinge and everything else so that's probably where the seam will be it's just probably going to be a little back farther than I would have normally gone, but it should be fine. But little things you have to think about when you're doing trailers is where stuff lines up, right? So that's what I'm doing. Anyway, this is the project for this morning. Is trying to get these uh, bars uh, curved and hopefully then I can uh, start figuring out the roof. All right, so I set up some wood in the thing, in the press. Uh, see if that'll make any difference. Like I say, the, the, the divoting was very minimal and it's covered both sides. I just was more curious to see if it would work. Anyway, I'm gonna try and bend these up. I got my little jig here. I didn't put in the vise because the vise is way over there. It saved me some walking. I just screwed it to a piece of dunnage we had laying around. So that's my test fit piece to get the radius right. And I'm gonna try it in the press and see how it goes. I'm bringing it in like an inch at a time, just really slow. You see it's on the wood here. I got a piece of wood under the metal plate, um, or the piston I mean, and uh, it seems to be working pretty well, so I'm pretty pleased. The other one oh, I overbent a little bit, so this one I'm going to try and just do it a little bit more gradually so I don't have to <clears throat> put it back. Um, that being said, it worked out really good. It wasn't hard to put it back. So, this is, uh, I'm pleased this will work because I was kind of stressing how I was going to do the galley doors as I don't have a bender. So, um, I got the big hoops all bent for me because I just don't have the tooling for something like that. Um, so, this is great for the finishing touches to put it, build up a uh, bender bar here and there. This is great. I just never tried to bend tubing, <clears throat> so you never know until you try, I suppose, like everything. The nice thing about something like this, short of all the kinks and stuff like that, if you're really given her, um, but the thing with the radius is it, it takes smaller increments to make something curve. You don't have to go crazy uh, on that, or you just end up with one big nasty point at the center or something like that. You just kind of want to walk it through. You say about inch, inch, half inch to an inch, three quarters, somewhere around there. Just kind of slowly let it walk up, depending on your radius anyway. And either way, you're still better to walk it along and do it mildly and just keep going over it because it helps feather it out and not put pressure points and then you don't get the, the, the divots and the marks. Oh, oh, don't go up. Sometimes I forget to shut the piston off and then it creeps up and I gotta pump it a thousand times to get back. We have uh, an electric one. I just didn't feel like setting it up. It's, not that it's a big deal, but this was nice and easy. Uh, that's what I tried this little sample on yesterday and it was, worked well, so I figured I'd just stick with it. A roller is 
obviously the best job for this. That's you can get your even uh, even pressure all the way through. You don't get any kinks, anything like that. It kind of feathers it all out and flows it all out. But this is covered on both sides, one side with the roof and one side with the interior panels. So you will, you'll never see it as long as the shape's correct. I don't even need to really do this wood thing and try. I just wanted to see if it would, how much difference it would make. It does make a difference, there's no doubt. It just takes that hard edge because you end up with a sharp edge here, a sharp edge there. Then your piston has a, uh, a sharp edge on both sides. Uh, you can put a rounded um, um, piece in the end of this, but wood is great because it's soft. So it takes the cushion and it helps. Um, it just it, it's even better uh, if you can do it for something mild like this where it's not a harsh curve. If I was doing a sharper curve or something like that, maybe uh, you, you'd need it because for one, you need the, the smaller width on the, the piston. Um, but for the, the radius that I'm doing is a fairly, fairly soft. I don't know what the degrees of it is, but put it this way, my, my fan, when it high centers, I'll have to put a spacer in it. When it high centers, there's about, from the center of the fan to the outside edges is about a quarter inch difference on each side. So I'm gonna have to either make a spacer or, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. But I'm, it's, so it's a quarter inch over, over the 14 inches, it's about a quarter inch each side. So I don't know what that radius is, I haven't looked at it, but that's, kind of the radius we're talking it's not huge but it's definitely a radius you can't put a straight bar there and expect uh, the roof to, to look right it looks pretty bad yeah so I'm going a lot more soft on this one just see like it's hard to tell you just kind of got to go with it just keep work, working it back and forth and hopefully everything goes well Especially this isn't isn't it? Ah, this isn't a continuous radius. It's uh, the whole way through the arc. It's changing, so um, that makes things a little bit more trial and error. So you got to find spots that are you need more pressure than others. It's not a standard thing. So almost there. That's why I didn't want to do the arcs of the edge of the trailer. For one, I don't have the tooling. The only way to do that and do it nicely is with a roller. And that's not what you do. And something, those pieces, when they're rolling them, I don't know what they probably are, but they're probably 16 feet long. And when you don't have the knot, they're probably even, I don't know if you're using a CNC bender or not, but um, either way, when that's not what you do, that's a whole big piece uh, to get done. It's not like you're putting it through on you're rolling a, a ring. A ring, I have used mandrel benders and stuff like that before and they're great. Uh, um, that being said, if you're doing one radius and it's continuous, it's not too bad. When you're doing something that the radius is constantly changing the whole way through the arc and it's 16 feet long, that's a, that's a job. It's really is for professionals. There's a reason why most people that do this kind of trailer um, they do this as a manufacturing, so they're getting them done. Um, or they have their setup to be able to do it. Um, but for one-off people, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit different. Yeah, I, this might be the only trailer I ever build. I have no idea. So for now, it's the only trailer I'm, I'm building. And uh, I don't have any plans to build another one. But you never know. This one's built for a specific reason, for a specific vehicle. I mean, I'd probably go bigger uh, somewhat. I love the look of this, that's one of the main reasons, but, um, and I'm going with a vintage car. It's getting there, I'll have to check it now. But uh, yeah, obviously if I was towing this with a, say a 58 Impala wagon, uh, Brookswood or something, uh, which I'd love to build one day, uh, then I could have a much bigger trailer. And it's not about size, but I mean, obviously the wagon I can't sleep in, the bus I can. 
it's a little bit different animal. The bus is actually amazing inside compared to even my Tahoe. You would think the Tahoe would be bigger and more easy to sleep in. Not a chance. The bus is way better to sleep in than the Tahoe, and it's twice the size. So that's interesting. But for now, a little tiny, this little guy will be work great. I only got 40 horse, so, or sorry, eight, uh, 90 horse. Uh, so it's uh, not a lot of power. So you got to try and make it as efficient as possible. Aluminum is fantastic for that. And also, I don't like maintenance. I'm not a maintenance guy. I want to build it once. I want to build it right. We're good. So now one more to do. See with the wood on the top side at least it makes almost no uh, marks. On the bottom it has a little bit. Just a little bit. And I probably can go closer together but you can just see slight dimples. Not bad for a, a press instead of a roller. Found my center, measured up my crossbars, so I'm just kind of mapping it out. I'm gonna put it up in the air and just kind of check it out, see what it looks like before I get too carried away. Make sure everything's good, but so far it's looking okay. Just roughly jigged up. Lines up good. The centers hit all the way down perfectly on the radius. So it's good. Means I got it. Hey guys, so today's finally the day. Roof's going on. All the roof spars are getting welded in. It's been a little back and forth, a little frustrating week. I haven't got much done, just lots of thinking. Uh, just trying to figure out where the roof line ends and uh, all sorts of weird stuff. So just a lot of figuring out. Um, so finally get to weld some bars in. I got one tacked in. Um, so I'm basically just working on the fan at first, uh, the fan area, because <clears throat> it has the two and then it has the two cross braces uh, to support, support it all. And uh, so I'll start with those and it's time to make it happen. Time to make it so I can <laughs> a lot closer. That's a, a big difference. So time to make it happen. So I got my fan bars tacked in. So this is the fan base that goes on. Uh, this is why I'm going to have to make some spacers. As you can see, um, if I was to go um, straight across of this, that wouldn't work because it's a curved roof. So what I'm gonna have is this. So I'm gonna have to make uh, custom flange or some sort of spacer to allow the flat roof fan because this bottom is flat right so that's flat so as you can see 
It's about a quarter inch gap on each side. So I'm gonna have to make a custom uh, mount for it. Uh, not a big deal, just an extra process, but that's what's gonna happen. You can't, you can't put flat on round. So but this is what this is for. So the fan goes on top of there. So that was the, the first one. Now I gotta put the rest of the bars in. The tough one's gonna be when I get back to the galley because that's gotta be mint and it's a lot of complication. So everybody I talk to that does them uh, says the galley is the hardest part of the build. So we'll see how it goes. But this is what I'm doing and just wanted to show you that. So um, you can see what I have to, to do there for a spacer. But that's it, so far so good. Couple bars in so far. Shut up and sit down.
Also putting a block in the two corners because this edge from the inset comes down and sits on there. Not that it's going to go anywhere, it's a super short distance and it's more than strong enough, but a little brace doesn't hurt anything, it ties it all in together. So I figured I'd throw a piece in there. I'm trying to leave, I, I'm not doing it all filling in here because I'm hoping to be able to still get my insulation in here. It'll be a little tricky, <clears throat> but uh, we'll see how it goes, but I want to get it all strong before I put in the, uh, the, the inset bars. Because this is, you know, if I weld this after and it wants to pull and go in a different direction, then it's no good. So get the surround strong and then when it goes square up the rest and then weld it in.